up until about six months ago, I lived at Mahon Library and just slept on the the cement around the building. My brother and I are living on my social security. Well, that doesn't go too far. So we have found these places to eat and it sure does help. Okay. It sure helps. My mother's in a nursing home and that's where all of our money went. But once you get down to that hole, it's uh, you need somebody to pull you up. You can't just crawl out of it. It's hard. It all started in 2007. There was a group of people that came together that we, we had a common vision, and that was to reach out to some of the most underprivileged people in Lubbock. We wanted to work with the homeless, to give them a hand up, but we also wanted to work with the single mothers that were trying to raise a family on a limited income and to reach out to the people that were struggling to pay their medical bills, the people that just needed somebody to care about them and give them a hand up. And so what we started out with was a wonderful building to work out of at 34th and Boston and a little bit of seed money. And from there, a lot of things have developed. At least once a week, we would come here and eat a warm meal. I was asked here a while back if there were hungry people in Lubbock. Yes, there are. And this ministry right here has helped a lot of them. You know, it's convenient for us to think that the resources of the federal government are there to take care of the people who suffer from problems associated with poverty. I mean, that's why we pay taxes, right? But the truth of the matter is that some of those problems can only be addressed by caring people because it's more than just food or money that takes care of the problem. And that's why there's a need for organizations like Impact Lubbock, because not only do we address some of those specific immediate needs, but we give people something more important than that. And that's we give them a friend and we give them hope. The most primary need that we all have is food and clothing. And we're doing that. Maslow's hierarchy of needs, the bottom hierarchy is food, protection, water. That's the basics. And if you ever want to move up the hierarchy to happiness, you have to have your basic met, needs met first. And that's what we are trying to do here. When we learn of someone who has a need for food, we step in with, with food vouchers that can help a family stock up on some of the nutritional basics. And then every Wednesday night, we serve a hot, nutritious meal for anybody that walks through the door. We've seen continued growth in this program. The setting is a family-style meal, and there we've got the opportunities to build relationships that have the potential to bring about all kinds of positive changes in somebody's life. But you know, when a person's hungry, it's hard for them to think beyond getting something to eat. And hunger is one need we can help meet. They do feel like we're family, and we try to emphasize that, that this is the family kitchen. Maybe a little different than some of the other soup kitchens because we're really trying to reach the families. You know, most of us take clothing for granted. You know, if we need something new, we go get it. But imagine trying to clothe constantly growing children with a minimum wage income or perhaps with no income. Well, I hope I'm going to get some shoes tonight. And the whole, I hope there's so many that that's why I get them. They're very important. Well, there's people that don't have a way to get clothes or get clean clothes. And they can get them here. Very important. When we open the doors of the clothes closet, believe me, there's a rush of people that fill that room. They're trying to get clothes for kids to wear to school, maybe something a little nicer for a job interview. Sometimes people are, are looking for clothes to help them keep warm. They're living on the street. Sometimes we give people some clothes and you can see the self-confidence just start to grow in them. Just because they've got something nice to wear, something new, something clean, something different, and their self-image just grows right in front of you. But you know, having food to eat and clothes to wear, that's a real blessing for somebody that's facing a financial struggle. But have you ever really wondered what the poverty-stricken do when they're sick? 
they don't have insurance, and in many instances, the transportation issue is a real problem. If they're working, the time they lose at work to sit for hours in an emergency room is sufficient to wreck their budget. These scenarios have moved us to lay the groundwork for coming alongside a network of health care providers to provide a free medical clinic that's available during the evening hours and on weekends. Here, we work closely with doctors from the Lubbock area who donate their time. We provide a facility that makes it happen. It takes a lot of time, patience, networking, some financial resources to get this launched. But here, uninsured and underprivileged clients can be seen by a licensed physician at no cost to them. And believe me, this service goes way beyond being a convenience. It actually can save lives. The high cost of health care is a concern for everyone who has a need. One of the main things that we're able to provide at the family kitchen is a source of love and hope. Anyone that volunteers their time or money to what we're doing here is assured that we are not just continuing a cycle of poverty and a cycle of problems. We offer services and goods here that enable a family or an individual to get back where they need to be and not stay in the cycle and just keep going around and around. This is a chance to break the cycle and get out of where you've been because if you keep on doing what you've been doing, you're gonna keep on getting what you've been getting. And I feel like I personally and everyone else around here is trying to portray the message that if you just make a few changes in life, you can get where you need to be. But it takes some assistance to do that. Some people can't do it by themselves. The potential to maintain these services and add other services is only limited by the willing volunteers and the financial resources to make it happen. The leadership of Lubbock Impact recognizes that our backs aren't strong enough and our pockets aren't deep enough to carry the burden by ourselves. We've got to have the support from people just like you. Do you want to help? Do you want to share the burden to reach out to people less fortunate than yourselves? Consider becoming a partner with Lubbock Impact today. We offer many ways that you can participate. In just a moment, your speaker will answer any questions you have and share about the many opportunities available to you. Thank you for your time and consideration.